So today, we are multiplying two binomials. Now, a binomial is an algebraic expression that has two terms. For example, right here, x plus 8, that's a binomial because there's two terms, two things being added together. We've got an x and an 8, so that makes it a binomial. And over here, x plus 5, that's a binomial because there's two terms being added together. Or down here, x plus 3. There are two terms that are being added together. And then right here, x minus 7. Two terms, this case, being subtracted. But there's two separate terms in there, so it's a binomial. All right? So when you multiply binomials like this, you'll notice there's parentheses around it, which tells you that this entire expression here is being multiplied by the entire expression right there. And it works out to be a lot like the distributive property. In fact, that's how I teach my students to do it. I know a lot of teachers use the acronym FOIL to make sure you multiply all the combinations. But I like to think of it as a distributive property. And here's how I do it. So all of this stuff in parentheses is being multiplied by everything in parentheses over here. So what I do is I take the first term, and I multiply everything in the second set of parentheses by that first term. So I have to do x times x, which is x squared. And then I also have to do x times positive 5x, which get I mean, x times positive 5, which is positive 5x. There you go. And then once I've multiplied everything by that first term, now I can multiply everything by the second term, which is a positive 8. Positive 8 times x is positive 8x. And then positive 8 times 5, which is positive 40. So you're basically multiplying everything in the first set of parentheses by everything in the second set of parentheses. All right? And notice, when you do that, you have some common terms here, some like terms here. For example, right here in the middle, we've got 5x's and 8x's. And 5x's plus 8x's gets me 13x's. So this whole thing simplifies to x squared plus 13x plus 40. And that's as simple as it gets. All right? Let's do another example so you can see it again. All right. Again, we've got a binomial times a binomial. And we're multiplying everything over here times everything in the other set. So let's start with the first term. x times x, which is x squared x times negative 7, which is negative 7x. All right, there's your first step. Now, let's do the second term. 3 times x, which is positive 3x. 3 times negative 7, which is negative 21. All right, I've multiplied every single term in the first set of parentheses by every single term in the second set of parentheses. Now, I can combine like terms and be done. So I've got two groups of x's, negative 7x plus 3x gets me negative 4x. And there's no other x squared, so I'll just drop that down. There's no other regular numbers, so I'll just drop that down. There it is. x squared minus 4x minus 21. All right, last one. This one's a little more complicated because, look, this time it's not just a single x in front. We've got 4x and 2x. But it doesn't change our process. It just makes things a little more complicated. So let's do it. 4x is the first term. So I'm going to multiply 4x by the first thing in the second parentheses. 4x times 2x. 4 times 2 is 8. x times x is x squared. So 4x times 2x is 8x squared. Now do the 4x times the positive 5. 4x times 5 is 20x. Okay, we're done with the first term. Let's deal with that second term. Negative 1. Negative 1 times 2x, negative 2x. Negative 1 times positive 5, negative 5. There we go. So we've done all of the combinations we need to do to multiply. Now let's just simplify it and we'll be done because we've got some like terms right in here in the middle. We've got 20x minus 2x which gets me a positive 18x. And there's no other x squared, so I'll just keep that the same. And there's no other regular numbers, so I'll keep that the same. And there it is, 
simplified. 8x squared plus 18x minus 5. All right. So that's how you multiply two binomials. Just make sure you get every single combination when you're multiplying it out. And I do recommend drawing these little arrows to remind yourself which combinations you've done already. Um, it keeps track of things visually, and then you make sure that you don't skip anything. All right? So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe. It really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math, and I will see you next time.